Close your eyes and imagine someone you were or are in love with. What are your feelings? What are your thoughts? What do you feel in your body? Heart beats faster. Sweaty palms. You're overflowing with energy. In this video, you will learn what is the secret of true love and why do you fall in love? What are the types and stages of love? And what secrets does your body hide when you are in love? Oh, giggity, 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 goo. But first, subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to be aware of news from the world of science and amazing things every day. What is love? While romantic people sigh under the moon, watching the stars, scientists look at human feelings under a magnifying glass and empirically determine their compliance with the standards. Love is a complex feeling, which is accompanied by a wide variety of sensations and states. The ancient Greeks tried to decompose it into parts. Psychologists created classifications. Scientists derived formulas. And with the advent of the fMRI machine, they scanned and examined the brains of lovers. About what science knows about love and what discoveries it has made lately, I'm going to tell you about in this video. Fasten your seatbelts, it will be very hot. British scientist Charles Darwin argued that a person, like an animal, is not guided by chance when choosing a partner. The choice of your second half is a multilateral process to which individuals approach with thoughtfulness and taking into account various factors. Scientists are fully convinced that sexual selection has become the engine of evolution towards the emergence of more complex species, including humans. More importantly, all the work of the last centuries has confirmed Darwin's idea, which is already 200 years old. Lions follow the temper of a lioness and only then make their choice. And the person looks at the potential chosen one for a long time, evaluates all sides, views inclinations, external data, and only then makes a decision. Of course, over the course of tens of centuries, a person has notably evolved in relation to the choice of partner. The truth about how men fall in love emphasizes the element of rationality of choice rather than thoughtlessly following the call of feelings. This is quite far-sighted with all responsibility and selectivity to approach the issue choosing a soulmate for creating a family. People strive to create the best conditions for themselves and their offspring and be sure that their family is safe. This instinct is completely natural and occurs in almost all animals. But surprisingly, in some species, sexual selection is very strong, while in others, it is much less pronounced. Scientists conducted a study and found that on average, the human mind takes from 90 seconds to four minutes to determine whether or not we are in love with a person or not. It turns out that falling in love, we fall into a trap created by nature. This is a natural phenomena that we cannot fight. Scientists also drew behavior, anatomical, and pharmacological parallels between social attachment, love and addiction, coming to the conclusion from which the heart begins to beat faster. According to research, social attachment is similar to behavioral addiction because people become addicted to each other through the exchange for wards. A whole chemical chain of reactions starts in our bodies, eventually causing a feeling that we call love. Certainly, there is nothing romantic in this, and absolutely anyone can become an object of love. The time when your brain will start the mechanism of chemical reactions, no one knows. But we know the traits that we subconsciously appreciate in people. They are the key factor in choosing the object of love. The ancient Greeks had a more romantic approach. Western and Russian people are very used to the same word, which can mean different things, from love of food to love for the motherland, and from love for one person to universal love, or to God. Modern man, too, strongly transfers the significance in love to the object. Thus, it turns out that the object of love itself sets the feelings that you experience. Ancient people paid more attention to the very nature of feelings, realizing that the object may turn out to be random. The Greek philosopher Plato identified three types of love, each of which differ primarily in tone and emotional color. These are eros, storge, and ludus. Sometimes the Greek word philia is added to them, which is translated as love. But still for the Greeks, the question of love is, first of all, something that concerns the bodily love of two living beings. Philia stands aside in this case, since the word is more abstract and better translated as acceptance or disposition. This is why the root phil has actively entered into all scientific names. Philosophy, philocardy, bibliophile, chlorophyll, and hydrophilicity. 
All these words mean not so much love for something, but the location in these objects. Eros is the love thirst. Speaking in terms of psychology, this is romantic love, in which novelty, dynamics, and not yet fully satisfied desires for possession are very important. Eros is always built on some idealization of the object. It is the species that, according to the Greeks, influences the continuation of the genus. Ludus is a love game. Ludus does not exalt his object. He is rather focused on himself, his passion, his ability to achieve. Storge is love care, tenderness. There is no element of achievement here. Here, intellectual acceptance of the personality of another person is important. It is the storge that the social moment is most noticeable, where love takes place due to the partner's belonging to a certain status. If one of these species is combined, they form adjacent species, mania, agape, and pragma. Mania equals eros plus ludos. This is the love in which it is impossible to get what you want. This is a strong feeling that swings the psyche like a swing, from manic euphoria to severe depression. Agape equals eros plus storge. This is love devotion. It all starts with passion, but then it softens its egoism and moves on to respect and the desire to give to a partner and develop him. Pragma equals ludus plus storge. This is love exchange. This is a calm feeling which is built on self-esteem and excitedness towards a partner. Pragma, not the word for pragmatism, but the word for action. In such love, partners seek satisfaction of their needs. Therefore, therefore, it exists only if each does something for another. Love is more complicated than we think. This is the intersection of several options and sometimes flow from one another. The secrets of love do not end with the classifications of antiquity. Research by scientists has shown that falling in love has three stages, lust, attraction, and affection. But how does it work? How does the chemical process occur? Each stage involves several types of chemical reactions in the body and the brain. Hormones help to excite all these three stages both separately and collectively. Feeling of lust. It is stimulated by two main types of hormones, estrogen and testosterone. In response to the release of hormones, the limbic process in the brain reduces stress and provides a burst of energy needed to discrete interconnected processes that initiate attraction. This phase is considered one of, oh, stage two. This phase is considered one of the most beautiful in life. This phase is when a person really begins to fall in love. This phase is called attraction. From a scientific point of view, the study concluded that there are three neurotransmitters that are involved in the process of attraction and can radically change a person's personality. These neurotransmitters are adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. Adrenaline. Scientists have found the first symptom of attraction causes an increase in adrenaline and cortisol. When you see someone you're in love with, your sensitivity goes down, your heart beats like a jackhammer, and your mouth dries up like you haven't had a drink in days. Adrenaline is the hormone of fear. Its effect is felt only at the initial stage, when you meet the person you are in love with. Scientists were shocked when they scanned the brains of couples in love. They discovered bursts of the neurotransmitter dopamine, a chemical that stimulates feelings of pleasure and desire. Having found this out, scientists have noticed that couples during falling in love are in a state of euphoria, as if they were on drugs. Dopamine is a natural stimulant that provides feelings of desire and keeps you motivated, but in high amounts it can cause euphoria, obsession, and even hallucinations. Have you ever heard about serotonin? This hormone distracts your mind, causing it to think about your object of passion. It keeps your other thoughts from seeping into the spotlight of your brain. Scientists believe that serotonin levels in men and women are different during the time of falling in love. Men have much lower serotonin than women. After successfully passing two stages of love, attachment arises. It is this connection that helps lovers take their relationship to the next level. It is at this stage that couples consciously create families and have children to take care of them. In this stage, scientists have discovered the action of two hormones that keeps the feeling of love. These are oxycotton and vasopressin. The cuddling hormone, one of the most powerful hormones, strengthens the depths of feelings and maintains the affection of partners. Scientists, with the help of research, came to the conclusion that the more often a couple has sex, the greater the attachment. Oxytocin plays a key role in belonging and attachment in humans. Oxytocin that creates a strong bond between mother and baby during childbirth. This hormone also helps predict the person's behavior and improve interaction between couples, enhancing social bonding. The second predominant hormone in this stage is vasopressin, our natural antidiuretic, and controls thirst. This hormone is released in large quantities immediately after sex. Although the brains of men and women are structurally different, they both secrete vasopressin from the pituitary gland, 
it is a vital hormone that helps build lasting relationships. Love is an amazing feeling. In addition to being a complex neurobiological phenomena based on the limbic process, it is also based on trust. Medical practice can use the concept of love in the context of the mind and body, that is, in integrative medicine. When in our heart, oh forgive the brain, love, we thereby reduce stress while strengthening health, receiving useful motivation that affects behavior. Love is a joyful activity that includes a sense of well-being. Love and take care of each other. I am sure you will love the videos on my channel, and the manifestation in the form of likes and subscriptions will be the highest reward for my efforts. See you in the next episode on What Is. Love you. If you want to be aware of the most amazing events, subscribe to my Telegram channel and Instagram at the link in the description.